Welcome to this week's Pilot Institute and Unmanned Tactical Group's Public Safety UAS News Update. This week we're going to talk about the Interpol Drone Expert Summit's DFR 2.0 conference that we had in Chula Vista, California. It was a ton of fun out there. I got to see a lot of old friendly faces. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about some of the highlights that that conference had. We're also going to talk about Texas Government Code 423 and their new appeal update that they just came out with. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of product demos uh, that I've been looking at and a new release that came out with the Mavic 3D and 2D dummies for training props and uh, support equipment. And then finally, we're going to talk about some online training opportunities that we have coming up through Unmanned Tactical Group. It's going to be a fun webinar. Let's dive in. Right out the gate, we're going to talk about Interpol's Drone Expert Summit DFR 2.0 in Chula Vista, California. It was a great few days that we had up there. The weather was absolutely perfect uh, with very little rain that popped up every now and again uh, for a DFR conference. We were able to see a lot of different manufacturers and software services that were out there. I uh, got to showcase their systems on how they are able to support drone as first responder. Uh, we were able to see Motorola Cape came out and they were able to show off a lot of their great equipment we had aerodrome out there or excuse me aerodome out there drone sense was out there with axon as well uh, so we were able to see what those different softwares look like and how those are going to be used for drone as first responder we also got to see a lot of really cool detect and avoid equipment as well matrix space was out there with their radar equipment that they had uh, and d drone was out there with their new dfr system that they have for detect and avoid too uh, it was great to see all the different softwares and all the different hardware coming together showing what the future is going to look like for drone as first responder. Uh, I was able to go out there and talk a little bit about what all is required for a DFR program, about the 101, what are all the components and how we need it. Uh, so it was a lot of fun to get to do that and to get, get to see a lot of old faces. I'm um, looking forward to the, to the next year's Drone Expert Summit. We'll see what we're going to talk about this time. Uh, the year before, we were able to speak about counter drone operations was the focal there. Uh, so that's always one of the... Uh Conferences that I really look forward to every year. Um, if you are able to attend an Interpol Drone Expert Summit, I highly recommend you attend one of those. Uh, it's great to hear how different agencies all over the world are utilizing drones for public safety because uh, here in the United States, we get a little bit pigeonholed into only hearing things that we can do within the confines of FAA regulations, right? Well, other countries don't have some of those requirements and those restrictions. Uh, so you get to learn a lot of really good information from those. So I highly recommend Interpol Drone Expert Summit in the event you get the opportunity to, uh, to attend one of those. Hope to see you there next year. Uh, and uh, outstanding job, Anders Martinson. He, he did some, uh, some very heavy lifting with Interpol Drone Expert Summit. So uh, outstanding job there for being able to uh, bring it all together. Uh, well, hope to see you next year. Next up, we're going to talk about Texas Government Code 423. Texas Government Code 423 is back on the books. Uh, there was a recent appeal that stated that the previous judge who said that it was all unconstitutional and preemptive, the next judge up on the uh, the next appeal court judge said that, nope, it's back on the books. Um, so if you're a public safety entity that is in the state of Texas, make sure that you get a legal opinion from your either district attorney and or state, uh, excuse me, or and or municipal attorney so that they can provide you with a definition of what they believe capture means under Texas Government Code 423. This does only apply to Texas agencies, but it's important to note Texas is one of the largest public safety footprints for UAS operators in the nation. Uh, so if you are a public safety entity, you need to make sure that you get with your attorneys and find out what they believe the defini definition of capture to be. If they believe the definition of capture to be transmission, then that's going to be highly restrictive on what you can and cannot fly for. If they believe the definition of capture to be possession of a physical data file, uh, then you'll be able to fly for just about anything you need to, but you can only capture evidence um, if it meets the definitions of uh, 423.002. So make sure that you look at that it's highly, highly important that you get a legal opinion ahead of time so that you know what you're going to be fighting on a testimony stand in the event that you do collect evidence with a drone. Uh, you also need to make sure that you pay attention to all of the different ways that people can get, now be arrested for flying a drone over certain properties like sporting arenas if they meet certain criteria, critical infrastructure if they meet certain criteria, correctional and detentional facilities as well. Um, so make sure that you're paying attention to that. Make sure that you understand what's going on with that. Uh, looking at the legal opinion, it looked like 
they essentially reversed it because nobody's actually been formally convicted of a 423 violation. Um, unfortunately, the eight people who have been arrested in the state of Texas since 2016, all of their cases got dismissed, um, but they did get arrested. So if you are one of those people who got arrested way back in the day under Texas Government Code 423, um, I highly recommend you get with NPPA because they may be uh, very interested in what you have to say. Uh, so again, Texas Government Code 423 is back on the books uh, in the state of Texas. Uh, the next we're going to talk about some product uh, product development. So the uh, DJI recently uh, released their Mavic 3 dock system. So the M30 system, uh, they came up with a miniaturized version of it. It's nice and small instead of it being the 200 pound system that the M30 series is. Uh, they now have the Mavic 3 dock, which is only 70 pounds. Um, you're looking at a newly designed Mavic 3 series. It look, it's fully IP rated. It's got fixed arms. It has the Mavic 3T payload in there. Uh, I believe they're coming out with a Mavic 3E series as well for that payload system for mapping purposes. It's got a really nice flight time as well, and it's considerably cheaper. Uh, so if, if, uh, if memory serves, the price point on that is around $10,000 for the full dock with the drone, and that's you know, a third of the cost of a Matrice series. Uh, so you, they're definitely going after the swarm tactics when it comes to being able to place these lo in locations. Uh, unfortunately, you're still gonna have to figure out how the FAA is going to allow us to be able to fly multiple drones by with only one pilot. But that's a conversation with the FAA uh, and to see what uh, their palette is for that, to be able to have multiple pilots for, or uh, one pilot for multiple drones. Uh, but it does look like a really nice system. It could be very valuable for public safety. I'm looking forward to getting one so I can start testing uh, that unit. Uh, so looking forward to that. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is 2D dummies. Uh, so I was recently uh, was had the great opportunity to talk to the CEO of Drone Dummies, uh, or excuse me, of 2D Dummies. Uh, if you've never heard of them, they make uh, props for search and rescue and for uh, locating suspects and things of that nature. They make life-size cutouts of what it would look like if you were flying your drone. Let me try to get the, try to not get some glare on that. There we are. Uh, they make life-size cutouts that you can place out in the field at unknown and locations that you can send your people out to try to locate them. So like, for example, this individual's got a hurt knee. Uh, what's also really nice about it is they also have a thermal uh, tape on the back of those. So if you're running thermal, you also can uh, get positive hits on those. They also have, um, that one's a cardboard type cutout, like a uh, political type signage cutout, which is really great for its lightweight. It holds up really well. I've had this out in the sun for quite a few, uh, quite a few weeks now, uh, and it's still looking good. But they also have hard compressed foam uh, as well. And so this is a little kid uh, all huddled up in the fetal position and full thermal backing tape. So you can use both the thermal, thermal systems on your payloads as well as your visual sensors. Uh, and then they also have, again, uh, full-size cutouts of, of adults, uh, thermal backing on the back of all of these. These are an outstanding uh, support system for your uh, training scenario so that you don't have to put the rookie out in the field to let him get cold and wet for extended periods of time. So you can place these out anywhere and move those, leave them out there for extended periods of time as well. And it allows us to be able to do that systematic repetition uh, so everybody can learn from each other while those are out in the system. I'm very, very impressed with these uh, 2D dummies. Really highly recommend them. They're at a pretty nice price point too. They're, it's a really good quality print. It's a really good quality backing on these systems. So they'll last a really long time for you. Couldn't recommend a more outstanding job 2D dummies. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about some online training opportunities. Uh, the City of Paraland is hosting a lot of our in-person courses coming up here in the next year. We also have uh, a new system online for this for online live access as well. So while we're on site teaching these series uh, courses that we have, you also will be able to tune in live and watch and communicate with an instructor for all of those courses. Uh, we have courses for UAS supervisor. Uh, highly recommend you attend that if you're looking for what does a supervisor need to be paying attention to if they're either starting a program or developing their program. Uh, we're gonna talk about policies. We're gonna talk about case law. We're gonna talk about maintenance protocols, what kind of pilot you need to try to select um, all of that information is going to be in that class. We also have a DFR 101 class where we're going to talk about what all do you need 
um, to start a DFR program, some lessons learned. What does the ACLU think about DFR in some of those challenges that you may want to have to navigate? Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun as well. And then finally, we have an intro to counter UAS operations uh, and investigations. What that class is going to do is kind of start getting you in the mindset of thinking about what do I need to do in the event that I have a nefarious drone operation, whether that's from an investigative standpoint, being reactive, or if you're being proactive and trying to curb uh, people that are using drones uh, for criminal intent and things of that nature as well. So it's going to be a great opportunity to come and learn what are some things you need to start looking at. And it's a great segue into our other online course that we have uh, with a partnership through DroneSec. Uh, so I highly recommend you attend those, take a look at those. The All you gotta do is just go to unmantacticalgroup.com, go to the courses, there is an option in there for a virtual seat. Uh, get into that and we'll send you over the Zoom information so that you could attend those courses virtually. So that wraps our public safety news update. I hope to see you in those trainings. I hope to see you on the next uh, webinar. Uh, Y'all stay safe and see you on the next one. Thank you.